Imagine this, it's January 1916 and the winds are howling, pushing water into the Zyder Sea. The people are under immense pressure and one by one, they start to break. Fast forward to today and the Netherlands isn't just surviving, it's thriving on land reclaimed from the sea. How on earth did they pull off this seemingly impossible feat? Let's find out together. The Historical Context The Dutch have a knack for turning watery problems into golden opportunities. Back in the day, they faced the relentless wrath of the Zyder Sea. Now, this is a water body that was more trouble than it was worth. From ancient times, it loved to flood their lands and drown their villages. But the Dutch, being the water wrestlers they are, started tackling this issue as far back as the Middle Ages. Then, during their golden age in the 17th century, they kicked things up a notch by draining lakes like the Beemster and windmills and converting them into fertile farmlands. Fast forward a few centuries to the brink of World War I and the Dutch decided it was high time to take on the Zyder Sea once and for all. The result? A modern marvel of engineering that turned an unruly sea into a productive lake, safeguarding lives and ensuring food security. This epic journey through time showcases how the Dutch transformed an almost impossible problem into a source of pride, all while making the most of their love for tulips, windmills, and cheese. Early Attempts to Close the Zyder Sea So back in 1667, the Dutch had this grand idea to put the Zyder Sea in its place by building dams on the Wadden Islands. They wanted to dramatically shrink their coastline and show that sea who's the boss. But here's the thing, the technology of the 17th century was like a horse and buggy compared to what we've got today. The Dutch were good at a lot of things, but closing off an entire sea was just a tad too ambitious for their time. You see, in the 17th century, they didn't have massive cranes, bulldozers, or heavy machinery like we do now. They had windmills, which were awesome for grinding grain and all, but not exactly ideal for constructing massive dams. So they had to shelve their big plans and focus on other things during the Dutch Golden Age, like, you know, becoming a global superpower. Anyway, fast forward to 1848, a time when revolutions were sweeping through Europe. The Dutch had a king who decided to make a preemptive move and handed over power to Parliament. With this newfound focus on governance, they also started investing in infrastructure and supporting entrepreneurs. It's like they said, Hey, maybe we should revisit that whole sea closing idea, guys. The desire to reclaim the Zyder Sea was rekindled, leading to proposals and debates. The 1848 revolution breathed new life into the dream of taming the sea, setting the stage for what would eventually become a colossal engineering feat. Cornelis Lely's Vision Cornelis Lely, the man with a vision. He stepped onto the scene with a plan that would change the game. Cornelius wasn't just an engineer, he was a genius with an absolute knack for politics. See, he looked at the sea and saw an opportunity. His plan? Build a massive dam to close it off and create a brand new lake. But here's where he really shone. He knew how to sell it. He understood that to make his dream a reality, he needed to convince the people. So, he focused on one thing that would catch everyone's attention, reduced dike maintenance costs. See, the Dutch had been dealing with miles and miles of dikes to keep the sea at bay for centuries. It was expensive and tiring work. Lully told him, hey, if we build this dam and turn the sea into a lake, we won't need to maintain all those dikes anymore. Huh? Huh? That struck a chord with the folks who were tired of consistently patching up the freaking dikes. But as fate would have it, Lely's brilliant plan faced a delay. It wasn't until the outbreak of World War I and the catastrophic flood of 1918 that the Dutch finally decided, oh, hey, <laughs> let's do this. The food shortages during the war and the devastation caused by the flood created a sense of urgency. So Lully's idea was put into action, and they began the construction of the fancy word in Dutch, which I believe is pronounced Ufslightdeck. Now, pardon me if I get that wrong. Dutch is an awesome language, but ooh boy, that was a tongue twister. 
Anyway, this thing was a massive 30 kilometer long dam that would eventually close off the troublesome Zyder Sea. Now, it's amazing how sometimes it takes a crisis to kickstart an ingenious solution. The construction phase. Okay, so imagine this, our beautiful Dutch word, the Ufsladek. Again, apologies if I get it wrong. This thing is a whopping 30 kilometer long dam, and it was the hero of this phase. It was like the Great Wall of China, but built to close off the Zyder Sea. Construction started in 1920 and went on for well over a decade. Can you imagine the scale of that project? Can somebody call Moses and ask if they can borrow his staff? Right? But get this, the Dutch were like, enough is enough, Zyder C. We're putting an end to your flooding antics right now. Well, now the Dutch are masters at dealing with water, but even they had their work cut out for them when it came to reclaiming land from salty soil. So they built a test polder to figure it out, and it was not a piece of cake. The salty soil was a tough nut to crack, but they weren't about to give up. They also had to determine the best crops to grow, with rye, barley, and grass clover emerging as the top choices. To address excess water, they established an intricate network of ditches, treating it like a determined puzzle to solve. Then in the 1930s, as the global economic crisis hit, the Netherlands wasn't spared, witnessing a surge in unemployment. Yet, the Dutch ever insanely creative and inventive seized this opportunity, mobilizing thousands of jobless young individuals. Guess what? With shovels in hand, they personally dug 80% of the 14,000 kilometers of ditches, showcasing remarkable determination. The economic crisis inadvertently served as a catalyst for realizing their dream of land reclamation. World War II and beyond. During World War II, with the German occupation of the Netherlands, construction faced significant challenges due to scarce resources. Nevertheless, the awesome Dutch persevered, managing to build dikes, drain water, and dig ditches using machinery. After the war, their focus shifted to completing the Northeast Polder and tackling land subsidence, a common issue when dealing with reclaimed lands. They employed machines to combat this problem and achieved remarkable results, constructing 500 kilometers of road, 59 bridges, and 300 farms. However, in 1953, a massive flood disaster struck the southwest of the Netherlands, resulting in the loss of thousands of lives and the displacement of numerous families. While some chose to move away, Others found solace in the newly reclaimed lands, marking a period of migration, rebuilding, and resilience in Dutch history. The Final Reclamations In the Netherlands, they always seem to have one more trick up their sleeves when it comes to dealing with water. This time, it was all about Flevoland. Eastern Flevoland and Southern Flevoland, to be exact. See, these weren't just tiny patches of land. We're talking about massive polders ready to be reclaimed from the water. Eastern Flevoland was all about fixing a housing crisis. The cities were bursting at the seams and they needed more space for people to live. So they thought, let's make some new cities in Eastern Flevoland. And guess what? It worked like a charm. Southern Flevoland, on the other hand, was the practical choice. It would help close the dikes of Eastern Flevoland and was way cheaper to reclaim. So cities like Almere sprouted up, easing the pressure on nearby cities like Amsterdam. It's like they had a master plan for urbanization on reclaimed lands. The Unfinished Project Remember Marker Ward? It was supposed to be next on the list, but the Dutch had a change of heart. Environmental concerns started to creep in and people began taking them seriously. The idea of maintaining a lake instead of reclaiming it gained traction. Marker Wart, which was initially part of the big plan, started to fade into the background. Eventually, they made the tough call to halt the plans for Marker Wart. It's like that one project you never got around to finishing, except in this case, it was a deliberate choice. The environmentalist had spoken and the Dutch listened. Sometimes it's all about striking a balance between progress and preserving nature. And speaking of balance and preservation, if you liked our video, then please make sure you give us a like, go ahead and click on that subscribe button, and click that notification bell so you'll be the first one to know when we drop new content.